Azure NAT Gateway is network address translation service. It provides outbound connectivity for one or more subnets of your virtual network. In this video, we will see what is Azure NAT Gateway, why this has been introduced and what business problems it will solve. And to demo the Azure NAT Gateway setup, we will pick most commonly used business use case, which is how to have a static outbound IP address for your Azure standard logic app. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we begin, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's start now. We have been making outbound connections in Azure even before Azure NAT Gateway was introduced. Even now, without a NAT Gateway, we are making outbound connections. Then why Azure NAT Gateway? Do we really need to worry about this? The simple answer is not unless you really make too many connections in less time. Let's understand this. Let's say we have a virtual network and we have two subnets. This subnet has a couple of VMs and a VM scale set and this subnet has an app service where either an API or a website is deployed. Now this virtual network is a private network. The incoming traffic to this virtual network is restricted. Let's talk about the outbound connection. Let's say for example, the resources inside this virtual network need to talk to a third party API, which is publicly available over the internet. And this API wants to know the IP address where the request came from. But when you deploy the resources inside a virtual network, you will have a private IP address. Of course, you can have public IP address associated with these resources, but when public IP address is associated with this resource, the request will go from that public IP address. But in most of the cases, we do not want a public IP address to be associated with the resources inside a virtual network for the security reasons. Now, the private IP address of these resources need to be translated into a public IP address. This is what the network address translation. Let's understand this with an example. This is the private IP range of our subnet and when making the outbound calls, let's say for instance a private IP address is converted to this public IP address and this public IP address is picked by Microsoft Azure, it will be based on the resource and where the resource is deployed to. Now if you are talking about the API calls which are nothing but HTTP request which is a TCP connection, in that case Every TCP connection has to be associated with a specific port number. If you look at this example, the VM1, this is the private IP address of this VM and say for example an API call on the port 10,000 will be translated to the public IP address of a port 2000. Similarly, VM1, if there is another API which has a different port, is translated to the same IP address, a different port, and altogether a different VM on the same subnet will be translated to the same IP address, a different port. So if you see here, each public IP address is associated with 65,000 ports only. Yes, this is a very huge number of ports available per uh, IP address, but when making TCP connections, if we don't reuse them well, and if we make too many connections in a very less time, then we end up using all the ports available. And when there are no ports available to be used, then the TCP connections will fail. They don't fail with refuse connections, they simply fail. They time out and it's very tough to understand why the connection fail. This is called SNAT port exhaustion. And interestingly, because of how Azure works today, you don't really have 65,000 ports available. You have just 1,024 ports available, maybe or even less than that. Unless you have a public IP address associated with your Azure resources. For example, if you have a public IP address associated with this VM, then the outbound request would go from this public IP address. In that case, you have a dedicated public IP address and you might have 65,000 ports available. But 
if you don't have a public ip address associated in most of the cases we don't want to because of the security reason in that case a private ip address of our subnet needs to be translated into a public ip address in that case for the public ip address you may not always get 65000 ports you may get just 1024 or even less than that there are two cases here if your Azure resource has a public IP address associated with it, it has access to all 65,000 ports. But if you are making too many connections in less time, and if you don't reuse connections, you might encounter SNAT port exhaustion issue. And second case, if your Azure resources don't have a public IP address, in that case, on the other end, you may not have access to all the 65,000 ports, you just have access to 1024 or even less than that. If you make too many connections in less time and if you don't reuse connections, then most likely you will encounter SNAT port exhaustion issue. Now we understand what is SNAT port exhaustion, what problems we will run into. Let's understand when we should use NAT gateway. When should you use NAT Gateway? Well, based on how frequently your app is making connections and if you have one or two VMs, maybe this is not the thing for you. But if you have VM skill set and tons of different things in VNet which are making outbound connections, you might run into SNAT port exhaustion issues. So you might want it to route all the traffic via NAT Gateway to have a dedicated public IP address. And the third one, very interesting one, if you have an app service or standard logic app, you can use NAT gateway to have a dedicated outbound IP address. Usually app service or standard logic app have list of possible outbound IP addresses. And if they want to make an outbound connectivity to the third party API, and if the third party API has firewall in front of it, you might want to have all your possible outbound IP addresses whitelisted in the firewall. But if you set up NAT gateway, if you route all your traffic via dedicated outbound IP address, then all you have to do is just whitelist the dedicated public IP address on the firewall, then it can allow you to make the connect. We will see this in the demo. We will pick a logic app and we will route all the outbound traffic via dedicated IP address and we will see how this can be helpful. Let's start with the demo. I'm in my Azure portal. I have already created a couple of resources here. I have created a standard logic app and Azure function. This is the standard logic app and I created a simple workflow. I named it as a test and this is the workflow. It is just a HTTP trigger which invokes an Azure function and returns the Azure function response back. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if you want to place incoming traffic restrictions on this Azure function, I mean, this Azure function wants to accept the traffic only from certain IP addresses. If you want to do that, if I go back to the standard logic app and if I go back to the properties, so this is the outbound IP addresses and additional outbound IP addresses of the logic app. So the outbound connection would go from one of these IPs. This is a huge list and there are many IP addresses. We have to whitelist each and every of these IP addresses here. So this is not only for an Azure function, for example, if you are making an outbound call to any third party API, and if, they, if there are IP address restrictions in place, you would have to whitelist all of these possible outbound IP addresses, which is not a best practice. Now, let's see how we can route all the traffic from a static IP address using NAT gateway. So we can simply whitelist one static IP address and get this job done easily. For that, first simply just run this logic app and see, this is the URL and hit an F5 and you just come here, hit a refresh and you have the new run, which simply invokes the Azure function and returns a response back. Now go to the Azure function so this is Azure function networking option, three test Azure function networking option. And we're going to turn on the access restrictions for this Azure functions. Just go to here, just pick one of the possible outbound IP address, go to the Azure function and click on add, simply say IP whitelisting, Priya T100 should be okay, IPv4 and this is the IP address. 
click on add row now simply click on save okay the access restrictions is turned on now this will allow the traffic only from this specific ip address and it will deny everything else now if i hit a refresh there are many possible outbound ip addresses so hopefully it did not pick that exact ip address it would have been a different ip address that's why we got an error here now if i go back to the logic app run go to the failed one and see the forbidden because the inbound traffic to the azure function is restricted only from a specific ip address and we just picked this first one and the request might be coming from any of the possible outbound ip addresses that's why it simply rejected now let's fix this so rather than adding every outbound ip address in the access restrictions here we're going to route all of the traffic from the nat gateway and we'll use a static ip address to whitelisting so for that we'll simply create a nat gateway resource the name could be lg nat gw australia east i don't want any availability zone next outbound ip address we have to choose a public ip address here as we don't have any let's create a new public ip address here we'll call lg static ip that is available yep i'm gonna take that one and for the demo purpose we don't want any prefixes looking good go to subnet we just have to select the subnet here this is our resource group this is a subnet and we have to select the subnet so this is the subnet review and create now all the traffic that is going from that specific subnet would go via nat gateway with a static outbound ip address okay nat gateway resource is deployed if i click on the go to resource this is our nat gateway this is exactly our public static outbound ip address now if i go back to our logic app networking option we have to route all the traffic from that specific subnet add vnet the same vnet existing subnet we just have to select the same subnet click ok ok now the outbound traffic is routed via the specific subnet all looking good now if i go here see we have already nat gateway turned on and vnet integration turned on just to be sure if i go back to our resources our resource group virtual network subnet and if i select our nat gateway subnet you would see nat gateway that specific nat gateway here yep everything looking good now just let's go to our nat gateway resource copy the outbound ip address go to the access restrictions we don't need this one anymore simply delete it let's add a new one allow ip address priority 100 ipv4 and ip address is our public ip address just that space add row click on save access restriction update is successful now if i go here and hit a refresh we have successfully received the response we have the access restrictions turned on only from that specific public ip address and if i simply go here there should be a successful one if i hit the refresh yep this is a successful one and we have the outbound traffic routed via the subnet and the subnet is configured with the nat gateway so this is how we can use the nat gateway to route all the outbound traffic via static outbound ip address this is very helpful where there is a third party api which we are consuming in standard logic app and there is an access restrictions in place for the api and if they want to whitelist only certain ip addresses rather than we giving all possible outbound ip addresses we can simply give one ip address if you like the content please like comment share and hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel i'll catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you